today we are going to make little llamas out of felt. So the first thing that you guys will do is print out your PDF llama. So yours might be a black and white version, it might be a colored version. Um, if you have the colored one, your instructions will be right here in the corner. But we're gonna cut this out and pin it. You're gonna pin two layers of fabric and your paper pattern. So once it's all cut out, you'll pin it like this with the provided pins of your sewing kit. And then you'll have two little llama pieces. So it can go either way. You can decide which one is the front and which one is the back. The next thing that you are going to do, once you've cut this out, you will take your paper llama pattern and we're just going to cut the saddle off. So let me show you right here as I do this. So we're going to cut along with the scallop. Cut. And don't worry if it's not perfect, like these little felt pieces always look super cute. Um, so if you want the kids to do it, you can do that. Um, if you want to cut it out first and then just have them sew it together, that's fine as well. But we're just going to cut, cut, cut. And then we'll have these two pieces. So take your saddle and choose which color of your smaller pieces of felt that you want to use. So let's see, I think today I think I want to use this yellow and this lavender. I think that'll be a good combo. So I'm going to start with the yellow and again I'm going to pin my paper pattern to the felt. So at any point I also want to remind you that you can pause this video so that you can follow along. So if you need to pause it right now to cut out then definitely go ahead and do that. So again I'm going to take my scissors and out my little saddle. I'm gonna do that. You can see that a few of the edges peek out a little bit, but it's all right because the top is super straight. And now I can take my belt piece. I'm actually gonna separate my llamas. Um, and you'll see that it will fit nicely on the back right there. So once this, you have those two pieces, I'm actually gonna take my pattern again and I'm going to cut the scallops off. So. Cut this off and now I have my round saddle. I'm going to pin my round saddle onto my lavender fabric. and make sure that's nice and secure. When you're pinning with the intention to cut, you wanna make sure that your pins are not poking out because as you're cutting, you don't want to cut into your pin. So now that my pins are just on my fabric, I can go ahead and cut. I'm gonna cut around. like that. Take the pins out again and again I'm going to take just my single layer of llama and place the round saddle right oh it actually boop, goes this way. That's one thing you have to kind of pay attention to as you're putting your pieces together. I'm just going to take a second to line it up. Um, and then I'll pin it in place so that I know that it's all lined up. So this is what you'll have next. And at this point, you get to take, let's see which colors do I wanna use? Um, hmm, let's use, 
let's use this little kit right here. Um, so you will take your hand sewing kit and what you will find inside are your pins, so that's what I used, um, as well as some hand sewing needles. So you'll see a really small one and you will see a larger one. So you're gonna go ahead and grab that larger hand sewing needle, set it aside. And to start, I'm gonna use a pink to kind of decorate because the first thing I wanna do is attach my saddle to my llama. So when you're taking embroidery thread, you will notice that there are actually six strands that make up the embroidery thread. So I'm gonna separate those just like that and carefully and slowly, here I'll do it over my sweater so you can see because of the contrast. Peel that apart. And as it gets a little knotted, I'm actually setting it in my lap so I can straighten it out again and continue to peel these threads apart. Oh, and it, sometimes they all get knotted into each other. So you just gotta, gotta work at it a little bit. Oops, definitely done that better. But I'm gonna go ahead and take this long piece that I successfully separated. I'm just gonna cut it at the knot. I will deal with this piece later. And I can take that needle. Remember, it's the big one with the big hole so that I can thread, the, and I'm gonna just thread the needle. So this can sometimes be the most difficult part. Some people just really hate threading needles. And um, what you'll notice right here is, let's see if that'll focus. Um, I actually didn't get all the threads in. There's one that kind of is loose. So I'm gonna, the method I like to use, first off, if it seems like it's fraying at all, you can just go ahead and clip the edge. That'll help it become a little bit more blunt. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and kind of pinch it till it's just between my fingers barely poking out and just put the hole like over it and then they'll go in really nicely so we're gonna do that and at the end I'm gonna tie a knot but I am gonna leave a little tail so you'll see here down to like the middle point there's two strands of thread down at the bottom right here that's where I'm gonna tie my knot so here we go. I'm gonna tie a knot. And I'm gonna make sure that we also post a video that is um, basic, like knot tying, threading, and basic stitches. So that will all be available as a resource for you too, um, located in our website. So go check that out. But first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in from the back. So I want to start sewing from the bottom because later this will be covered up and then I don't have a knot in the front. So I'm going to start here and as I sew, feel free to play and explore and have a lot of fun with the decorative stitching that happens in hand sewing. Um, so instead of just going up and down and creating a straight line, I actually want to do a zigzag. So I put my, oh, also note that felt is not a very tight weave. So if you pull, like if I push this in and I pull really hard through, it will come through. You can either do extra knots or just pull right until it stops. So I'm gonna pull, it's gonna stop, and then I'm not gonna pull anymore. So yeah, I wanna do a little zigzag. So I'm gonna come up to the top here, slowly pull so it doesn't knot. I wanna come up right next to where I came out of my fabric. And then I'm gonna come back down in this direction. So it's just gonna be a little zigzag. Um, let's see. Okay. 
also, and I'm just gonna continue to do this zigzag all the way around. So I'll speed this portion of the video up and you will be able to watch it. Something to look for right here is you don't wanna lose your tail. What can happen is you'll notice that there are, um, there could be a thicker, see how these are all even? It's one, um, well technically it's three strands, but it's not six. So you wanna make sure your tail stays out. Um, so as you start sewing, say you get close to the tail, you can just pull your, like pull your needle a little bit more and your tail will not sink into your fabric. So again, I'm just gonna continue so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, you just kind of gotta be patient sometimes if you're going too quickly, um, knots will form more easily. So you just kind of take your time. So sometimes, again, like I said, if you're going too fast, a knot will form. So you just got to be careful about bringing it all the way back through. My tail's getting a little short, so I'm going to pull it back. And once I get to the end, so this is what I have now. I can take this pin out. Got my cute little llama. Yay. Um, the thread is not on the front, but it's on the back. And I'm going to going to tie a knot here. So there are a few ways you can do it. Um, sometimes your thread is really small and it can be difficult to tie a knot. It can also be difficult to tie a knot so that it's really close to the edge of the fabric. So the way we're gonna do it here is I'm gonna pick up the tie tiniest bit of felt. Oh, I'm getting a phone call. I'm going to pick up the tiniest bit of felt right where my thread is coming up. I'm going to pull, pull, pull until I have just a little loop. And then I'm going to stick my needle into that loop and pull. This will create a knot and I'm going to do that two or three times. Again, another loop, and then pull. Okay, that should be pretty secure. So, we have our saddle on. That was step one. And feel free to do any more decorating you want. If you want to come in with other colors and continue to embellish and make this a really elaborate um, project, then go ahead and do that. Um, but for now, I'm going to take another color. So I'm just going to pull this thread off. I'm going to do the face, facial features with this darker brown color. So again, I'm going to take my embroidery thread, find the end. Here it is. And I don't need much, so... I'll just take that much. So it's really not a lot. And I'm going to separate this. Um, so I'm gonna find three and three. So you can see that. And I'm gonna pull slowly until it's all separated. Perfect. And again, the threading technique here is going to be to pinch it into my fingers. There you go. Take the open end of it and just 
place it right over. There we go. So I'm gonna tie a little knot again here. I'm gonna make it a double knot since that felt does have a more open weave. So got my knot there. I'm gonna cut off the little end of my knot. And let's see, I'm going to, again, start in the back. You don't want to start in the front because you don't want your knot to show. So I'm going to start about right here and make the eye of this, this little llama. And I want to do like a little closed eye. So it'll be kind of a curve. And I'm going to go over this twice so that it can be a little thicker. Okay, so something like that. And I actually want to add some eyelashes here. So let's see. We'll just make short little eyelashes. <laughs> Cute. And then one more right down here. Love it. And then again, um, you don't have to, but I just want to make the eye a little bit thicker. So I'm going to go back over these little parts. this and then one more will complete the eye great and then because I want to use the same color for the mouth I'm actually not even gonna cut it here I'm just gonna here's the back I'm gonna go in right about here and make the mouth and there are so many different ways that you can do this there isn't just one there isn't a certain placement it has to be in so just kind of have fun with it i've had students who want to make like two little eyes on their on their llama and like why not do whatever you want but here is a sweet little smile i think again i'm gonna go through this one twice just so it's a little thicker and it'll help me close up some of those gaps as well that were in here. But there we go, that is its little face. So again, I'm gonna use that same technique for tying a knot. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of fabric right next to where my thread was coming out. Pull, pull, pull pull until I just have a little loop and then go through the loop, pull tight, and then I'm going to do that one more time. So up through the fabric, wait for a little loop, go just through the loop, and pull. Okay, so I can cut that now. All right, we are almost done. How cute is this? So another thing you can do if you wanted to get more decorative um, is you could add like little pom-poms. And so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how we've done that. Let's see, let me grab a dowel actually. Okay, I gotta switch my seating position. You guys doing, making do with what you have is totally wonderful in all of this coronavirus time but doesn't mean my back has to hurt while I'm teaching you a video <laughs> so I'm gonna just go around this dowel a bit and then pull off like this and you'll see that now I have like a little ball I'm gonna take the end of it and wrap around around 
and around. I know it seems it's so small. Sometimes this can seem really difficult. Um, but now what I can do is I'm going to cut this off and okay, let's get this in or this needle. Okay. So I'm going to, honestly, it's probably easier if you do this part first, but um, I'm going to thread this needle. So yeah, let's thread it. Great. And now I can go around some more, but create a knot. So I'm creating a little knot around the top. Um, I'll show that to you one more time. So I'm gonna do two knots. So you have your little ball. And again, I'll probably do a separate video just on these little tiny pom-poms so that you can see it with more detail but I'm just tying a knot right over the top. So again, squeezing that, squeezing that together. And then I'm going to keep my needle in it. And actually, you know what, let's just cut this off. We will sew it later, okay. So I'm going to cut that and then I'm going to go into the little loops and cut them. So now I have this little mini tassel, like the tiniest little tassel you've ever seen. It's probably not true. You've probably seen other tiny tassels. You could also find cute trim, but this isn't, they're easy to make. Um, and if I wanted to tassel, like make, um, show you make a little harness you could attach a harness like this and just sew it into place and you could put little tassels on it and that's just like a cute way to add more detail you could add tassels along the back um it's just fun Fun little details and when we have lots of time to do things or we're trying to like keep our kids occupied for hours because we all have lots of many weeks <laughs> to uh you know where we're in this um it's fun to kind of be a little extra right just add the fun little details but anyway so once that is all done once you have made your little llama as embellished and decorated as you would like you're going to take your other llama piece and put it on the back. So what that does too is it hides all of the little imperfections, all of these little things in the back. So if you do mess up on the back too, or if there are knots or anything like that, don't worry about it because we are covering up our little llama back. And what we're going to do now is we are going to blanket stitch all the way around your entire llama. So I'm not going to show you that entire process, um, but I will work on it. And then once it's finished, um, I'm going to show you how we stuff it and what to do. So um, let me show you what a blanket stitch looks like. So again, I'm going to take, now I'm going to take my third color. Again, find the end. This time around, you probably want it to be pretty long. Like this is what I'm going to start with. I'm probably gonna need to grab another piece of embroidery thread later because it's probably not gonna be enough. But it's fine because you can just continue. So again, I'm gonna split this. Split, split, split. All right, we're going to take our thread, 
put it on the needle once more. Straighten it out. Again, you should have a little tail and then the rest of your thread. We're going to tie a knot. I like to kind of loop it around my finger and then put it in the hole. Then I'll actually <clears throat> put it in the hole again to kind of double knot it and make sure the knot all stays in one place so you don't have multiple small knots because that's not helpful. All right, I'm going to take this and we are going to start to blanket stitch. So um, for right now, I actually want to show you a sample of how to blanket stitch. I'll do it with these. Mm, let's see, I'll just do a higher contrasting piece of fabric. So we're going to go ahead and do it on this blue. Um, but what you're going to do for a blanket stitch is it's this really cool decorative stitch. So you're going to come up in your two layers of fabric on the edge. Starting it is kind of the weirdest part, but you're going to come up again and you're going to pull, pull, pull. And before you pull all the way, you'll have that little loop. So you'll see, you can still see that loop. So you are going to go, you'll see it. So I went up and then I went up again. I'm going to go back through the loop the opposite direction I was going and pull. <clears throat> now I'm going to go up again. So this, if I'm looking at it this way, I'm just sewing up, but I'm going to face it towards you and then pull, pull, pull until you have just careful, like straighten it out as you go. And again, until you have a little loop, you'll see that right there. And then I'm gonna go from the direction I was, I am, so I'm over here on this side, I'm gonna go back the opposite direction and pull. So again, I'm gonna keep doing that. You don't need to make them super duper close. You also don't want them to be really far apart because we're gonna stuff our little llama and we want all the stuffing to stay in. So again, we're gonna thread and then we'll have that little loop we're gonna go back through that loop and pull and so this is what a blanket stitch looks like so I'm gonna just do a few more so you can see so I want to make sure you have a pretty good understanding of what this looks like and then back through the loop So you'll see that you'll have little threads going up and down as well as a thread that follows and that kind of outlines your project. So <clears throat> I'm going to cut that off. That was our little sample. Again, tie my knot. gonna start <clears throat> hmm I think I'm gonna start down here by the legs it doesn't really matter where you start um, if you wanted to start up by the saddle to leave that open that's fine um, but I think I want I want to leave this little section open right in the in the chest for stepping so I'm gonna start by Again, going up, going up again, and then through that loop. So 
So I'm going to do this a few more times and you can just kind of see. And make sure your legs don't get caught. That's easy to happen because the legs are pretty, pretty narrow and kind of flimsy. They'll flail around a little bit. <clears throat> so I'm doing this a little bit quickly. I think I probably shouldn't have left such a big gap right there. But I just want you all to see <clears throat> kind of what this process looks like. So I'm going to show you up close and you'll see that you have that line going down the side and then you also see these little lines, um, these little stitches right in here. So you're going to do that all the way around all four legs. You're going to do it down the back of the tail, up, all the way around both ears, so you're going to one ear and then the other down the face and then I would stop right at the base of the neck so you have an opening <clears throat> what you'll have right here is an opening and in that after that what you can do is you can either if you're making a mini version of this you can totally put a magnet inside so we've made some like really small felt magnets. Those are always really, really fun. Um, but another thing you can do is you can take some polyfill and you can stuff it. Okay, so I have gotten my llama to this point now. So you can see I have a blanket stitch all the way around the whole body, but before finishing up, I left an opening right here. So this opening is for my stuffing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, if you want, you can pull your pin out, uh, your, sorry, your needle out for right now, just so you don't poke yourself. But you are going to take some stuffing. You wanna take just a little bit at a time because um, it can just get a little bit lumpy if you don't. So we're going to do a little bit at a time and just stuff it in. Something else that I like to use is like a dowel to kind of help me get into the more narrow places like the neck. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about stuffing into the legs because they're really, really narrow, but I just want a nice fluffy body for my llama. So you're going to continue to stuff a little at a time. And each kit will come with stuffing as well. So we're gonna just stuff, stuff, stuff down into the head. Right now I'm just poking my finger. It's kind of big enough to get my finger in there, but um, depending on what your project is, sometimes, like I said, a dowel can be easier. So stuff the little head. And we're just gonna keep going, stuffing up neck. So cute. I really do like how this is turning out. And when you stuff it, it will all like stand up when you hold. I mean, it won't like the legs are not sturdy enough, but if you hold it, it's not the head's not going to fall over once it's all stuffed. So I'm almost done here. You don't want to overstuff it too because you will because it's a blanket stitch um this side actually did a really nice job but um they're not as evenly spaced on this side as like they're not as close so you can see the stuffing sticking out just a little bit so even spacing is important so i could leave it like that i think i'm going to stuff it just a tad bit more maybe it was like this much this much stuffing and so once I get to this point and I'm happy with 
how my lawn is turning out. So you can see that's big, nice and big. Um, what you can do at this point is re-thread your needle with the leftover thread. That's why I didn't cut it right there. So again, I'm gonna thread it. I'm gonna cut this because it's a little difficult, a little bit frayed. So cut that, thread my needle. All right, here we go. And just gonna keep on going. With that blanket stitch. And again, I wanna leave that tail out. So I'm gonna pinch it as I go. So it will kind of wanna gape open. So I just pinch as if it were laying flat. I'm gonna sew up, pull, pull, pull through the loop. Again, sew up through the loop and pull up, back down through the loop. And I'm going to do this till I get to the very end. And I'm almost there. Now you see there's just a little hole that needs to be sewn up. stitches here and now my llama is all sewn so from the back again I'm gonna do that same knot I showed you earlier where I go in right through the felt so careful not to get caught in the legs and then go through the loop and I'm gonna do that twice and that will create a knot for me Then I'm gonna take this. Oh man, you can see I actually didn't get through both layers right down here. Sorry, it's bright, <laughs> kind of hard to see. Um, I sewed through the front, but not the back. So you just want to be careful as you're going. I got through this project a little quickly so that I could show you. Um, but then you will have this little llama. And let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit more of my pink embroidery thread and I'm actually just going to tie it around its neck because I just think that'll look cute. So just tying a little knot um, and I can actually make this a tassel if I wanted to by tying other, other pieces to it but you can see that. There we go. And I'm actually just going to tie this into a little bow because why not? Super cute. Okay, let's adjust the bow a little bit. There we go. And even instead of being right in the middle, I can it so it's just on the side so here you go this is my little llama i hope you enjoyed this video and please reach out if you have any questions